Tonight, Senator Al Franken goes after Uber, free anti-surveillance software, and what is all that texting doing to your spine? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 224, Thursday, November 20th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Now introducing Squarespace 7 with even better site management tools and other improvements. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TECHNIGHT. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. Today, Amnesty International, Privacy International, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, or EFF, and Germany's Digital Gesellschaft, that's probably close enough, collectively released a free open source anti-surveillance tool called Detect. That's Detect with a K. Designed for Windows PC users to scan their machines for known surveillance spyware used to target and monitor human rights defenders and journalists around the world. That's in the words of the coalition. However, the group does warn on its website, resistsurveillance.org, quote, please beware that Detect is a best effort tool. While it may have been effective in previous investigations, it does not provide a conclusive guarantee that your computer is not compromised by the spyware it aims to detect. The tool is provided as is, without warranties or guarantees of any kind. Yikes. But what the tool does do is apply political pressure on governments as well who do perform surveillance of their citizens. So in a way, it's a let's all be more aware type thing. If you hate Google ads, well, that's fine because the company just released a new tool that it's rolling out starting today called Google Contributor, which lets web users pay sites that they visit a monthly fee in order to strip out Google ads. The new feature is launching with 10 publishing partners like Mashable and Imager and WikiHow. Initial access to Contributor is by invitation only, but those that are part of the beta will see a list of participating publishers and can choose whether they want to contribute $1, $2, or $3 per month. Publishers handle collecting payment through existing Google Google advertising accounts, and then Google takes a small portion of the proceeds. Yeah, Google's not just doing this for no reason. This is a monetary thing. So you can think of contributions basically as an alternative to relying on Google AdSense revenue, if you're a publisher anyway. Let's behold the toughest glass ever. Gorilla Glass maker Corning has announced Gorilla Glass 4, which is designed not only to withstand scratches and scrapes and all the stuff that Gorilla Glass is already good at, but also the dreaded drop, as in dropping your phone on the sidewalk. It sucks when that happens because it shatters. The company says that its scientists examined hundreds of broken devices and shattered screens and performed new drop tests that used 180 grit sandpaper to simulate rough surfaces and then drop devices from a height of around 3.3 feet, something along the lines of where your phone would be if you were carrying it, and found that Gorilla Glass 4 survived sharp drop impacts up to 80% of the time and showed up to two times improvement over Gorilla Glass 3. Corning says that it's already shipping out Gorilla Glass 4 to partners and expects to see consumer devices using it within the quarter. Yesterday, we told you a little bit more about Uber's rapidly unfolding PR nightmare in the wake of an executive remarks about researching the lives of journalists who might be critical of the company. Believe it or not, it gets worse. And now the government's paying attention. Joining us with more is John Biggs, East Coast editor over at TechCrunch. Hey, John. Howdy, howdy. Good to have you. So, all right. Uh, right around the time that our show wrapped uh, yesterday, about 24 hours ago, News came in that Senator Al Franken had been eh, kind of poking into Uber's operations and 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 wants some questions answered. Uh, what's what does he have an issue with? Sure. Well, he wrote a fairly long, detailed letter. Uh, it's abundantly clear that he's he knows what's going on over there at Uber, at least what everybody else knows. He, some of the questions were, "What is this God view?" Mm -hmm. uh, Uber apparently has a sort of God view that they can watch everybody using the service, where they're going, where they're headed. And they actually threatened journalists that they were going to. It was nobody's abundant. Nobody's really clear on on what they exactly said, but they essentially threatened journalists, saying that they were going to follow them on God view, and this would give them sort of a uh, way to one up these journalists and follow these journalists as they go from meeting to meeting, which sounds pretty goofy, but who knows what's going on over there. Now, I know Franken gave uh, CEO Travis Kalanick a deadline of December fifteenth, so you know, a little mm -hmm. bit less than a month. So, you know, okay, assuming that, that, that Uber can meet that deadline, 
you know, is this something like is somebody from Uber going to be called in front of a Senate committee? I think that, and I was talking about this with Roberto Baldwin yesterday uh, from the Next Web. The idea that there's a God view. I, I'm not surprised by that. It makes perfect sense mm -hmm. if you're running a company like Uber to be able to to monitor that, yeah, how your how your drivers are doing and and who's sure. in cars. But I mean, what do you what do you think the Senate is this just sort of an information gathering thing, or or do you think that there's actually something wrong with Godview? Well, if everybody in the company, from the the secretary up front to the CEO, has access to the Godview, that's a problem, right? Yeah. So if we're looking at if we have some folks who are interested in data collection, I could understand anonymized data collection. That's that's expected almost from a lot of these companies. But if I know exactly who's in a car and where they're going, and the PR head or the someone in the in the PR war room comes over to me and asks me, "Oh, where's uh, where's where's this journalist going right now? Uh, can we use dig up any dirt using that?" That's that's ridiculous, and that's the suggestion here. And I suppose what is happening is. Senator Franken is bringing these guys up on the Senate floor and is going to ask these questions and figure out what exactly this God view is, is going to, is going to be doing and how they can solve the problem of God view being available to everybody at the company. Uh, is it available to every the company and, and what happens when it isn't? Sure. You know, Uber specifically has had issues in the past with coming across as sort of a bully company and, 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 and they've got this war with a fellow ride sharing app Lyft. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is something that in a way it's kind of like Uber can be seen as the big bad guy, but a lot of tech companies have a lot of personal data on their users. For example, I have a friend who works for one of the food courier services and she always knows what I'm ordering late at <laughs> night because she can. But what happens to some of these other companies who might be basically doing their own version of God view, having live sure. data on their users if, some, if a company like Uber has to change some policies? Well, think about something like Dropcam, for example. I know the folks over there and... What they've explained is that they anonymize the information that comes in. They use the information, but the machines only use it to assess, for example, if there's a human in the room. And there's there's all sorts of uh, there's also privacy issues if you have a drop cam in your bedroom or something that it's aimed at your bed, and a robot even a robot is looking at that feed. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. So opt in is is imperative here, and generally understanding that at this point in time you are being watched by Uber executives to make sure that. The same way that they would say this call is being recorded for quality assurance. Uh, if that's if that's abundantly clear to the rider, then I can't see that big of a problem. But uh, again, this data is important for them. But how how important is the also the uh, satisfaction of these riders? Now I know Uber hired a privacy expert to review its policies. Do you think that that's kind of just a you know is is that another sort of PR move in the right direction, or do we actually have a chance to 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 have a different privacy policy? Well, these guys have been on the back foot for quite a while now. They've, they've been fighting against the taxi industry. They've been fighting against these Lyft and the other uh, car sharing services. So it seems like what this all is, is a, is a company that has always been in peril and now feels that it has to lash out again. And if this is all true, that they are hiring a piracy, uh, privacy expert to, to assess this and they are trying to turn over a new leaf and become... I guess a better company, we could say, uh, then perhaps some folks will forgive them. But I, I don't think they're going to get out of this. Uh, they're not going to weasel out of this uh, senatorial call here. What about the uh, the, the the funding uh, that Uber is looking to raise or they're looking to secure? I think it's one billion dollars more in funding. Uh, they've already raised <laughs> quite a bit of money. Sure. You know, when you're talking to people who have a lot of money that think you have a great company that that mm -hmm. that that serves more than just some sort of a you know tech geek or something lots of people use uber i just wonder how much this will be a thorn in uber's side i mean they need more money because they want to keep scaling into different more more different cities mm -hmm. does this get affected at all do you think well, somebody somebody noted that the that Uber is not a startup anymore, and that they're a global technology company. And I would still argue that they are a startup, and they still have to they still have to work as a startup, and they have to gain respect, they have to gain trust, and they have to gain users. Uh, if Target, for example, has a security breach, we're generally still going to go head back to Target to get our whatever dishwashing liquid or where you buy out there. Uh, but there are plenty of alternatives here to Uber. And if they want that cash and they want to get that investment, they have to get in front of this. 
And obviously, folks are calling for the CEO, Travis Kalanick, to, to step down. I'm not sure if that needs to be that drastic, but I could see that as an as a end game for this whole opportunity, this, uh, this whole uh, mess here. And uh, whatever they say now is going to be scrutinized because they've been caught at least proposing that they're going to follow journalists around and try to, try to stab journalists in the back as they report on Uber and Lyft and the competitors. And it's, a, it's kind of nasty business. John Biggs, speaking of journalists, is the East Coast editor for TechCrunch. Thanks so much for joining us, John. And uh, before sure. you go, remind folks where they can keep up with you. Uh, we're on TechCrunch.com, uh, and you can see a lot of my stuff at BigWideLogic.com. That's where I put all my other junk that I do. Excellent. Thanks so much. All right. Super. Thanks a lot. Coming up, Firefox chooses Yahoo over Google. Ooh. And how bending your neck to text might be affecting your spine, and not in a good way. But first, let's thank Squarespace.com for sponsoring this episode of TN2. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it really easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. I am a happy Squarespace user. I've been using Squarespace for years. My site is quite minimal these days, but that was on purpose. Squarespace 7, if you haven't used Squarespace yet, makes getting started easier than ever. You can live edit on one screen. Anybody who's familiar with Squarespace no longer has to toggle between a site manager and preview mode. It's all in one, so it just kind of streamlines the process. And you can preview designs in device mode as well, so you see how your site looks on, on the web and on tablets and, and mobile devices of, of many different sizes. You'll also have instant access to professional stock photography from Getty Images for just $10 each. That's really helpful. You need a, you need a great photo, you, you know, to polish off the perfect blog post or, or on your splash page. You could do that right from within Squarespace. And Squarespace has specific templates that cater to different industries. A musician wants a different website than a chef, for example. So you've got a lot of options there. The new Horizon template, we've talked about this all week. It's so cool. It's laid out for bands. So there's tour dates and, and there's a music player that's right in, in the design and a merchandise store. If you want to sell things through your website, e-commerce is available on all subscription plan levels. And that includes the ability to accept donations. Even if you don't have anything to sell, you can raise some money for whatever good you're doing in the world. Plans start at just $8 a month and include a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Squarespace portfolio, note, metric, and blog mobile apps, they're all great. They're on-the-go extensions of your website, so you can monitor and make changes from wherever you are in the world. Hosting is included. Squarespace takes care of hosting, so you don't have to. It's an all-in-one solution and a really affordable one as well. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card required and start building your website. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure Sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT and you'll get 10% off and you get to show your support for us. Use Squarespace 7. Yes, if you're an existing customer, you can go to the settings tab and activate all the new features. They're very cool. Thanks to Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. A better web awaits and it starts with your new Squarespace website. Okay, on to a few more stories that we're following today, because there are more. Firefox has chosen Yahoo as its default search deal partner, at least in the U.S., which means that Google is out. According to Mozilla CEO Chris Beard, whose Mozilla Foundation oversees Firefox, Yahoo was the better strategic partner. This is a little bit weird because Google had been Firefox's global default search partner for 10 years, last renewing back in 2011. But Google remains the default Firefox search partner in Europe. And then Yandex is the default search in Russia and Baidu is the default search in China. Maybe they're just diversifying based on who we all are. And apparently we Americans just really, really like our Yahoo. I didn't get that memo, but whatever. I don't even use Firefox. Twitter wants you to share public tweets privately with your friends. Yep, yep. So starting today, Twitter users can share public tweets with others via direct messages or DMs. Earlier this week, Twitter actually updated its infrastructure to allow users to send URLs via DMs. You might have recalled if you do any DMing that that was not previously possible. And group messaging is still on track to roll out in 2015, which really puts Twitter in a lot closer competition with messaging services like WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, both owned by Facebook. Airbnb has announced an additional liability insurance program for its hosts. Hosts are people who rent out rooms or apartments on the service that will provide hosts with up to $1 million worth of protection 
in the event of a guest being injured anywhere on a host's property during their stay. The insurance extends to both hosts and landlords, if the host has a landlord, and is in addition to Airbnb's protection programs, which already include a $1 million host guarantee in case of property damage. There have been several events of just that exact thing in Airbnbs. The new insurance will be added automatically to all company U.S. listings starting on January 15th, 2015, and Airbnb says that it wants to extend the program to its international customers, too. It does have a few exceptions, though. It won't cover injury caused by defects in a location, such as drywall problems or mold or bed bugs, asbestos, or pollution. Do your research, I guess. Look at those pictures closely before you sign up. Okay. Everybody stood up straight for this last story here. A new study from spinal surgeon Kenneth Hansrudge says that bending over, looking at your phone while texting can cause significant stress on your spine and could even cause damage that would eventually require surgery or surgeries. For example, bending over at a 60 degree angle puts about 60 pounds of pressure on your spine. Did you know that? Now, of course, this is not the fault of texting itself. You could be bending over to read a book or all sorts of reasons, but you aren't, are you? You're texting, you know you are. The study also finds people spend an average of two to four hours a day with their heads tilted forward to look at a small device, whatever it may be, which is 700 to 1400 hours per year of extra stress on your spine. Hans Raj notes in the study that previous research has found that people with proper spinal alignment report increased feelings of power, increased tolerance of, for risk taking and decreased levels of cortisol, which is a hormone primarily associated with the body's response to stress. Sit up straight, man. That's all I got to say. You're going to be more powerful and probably happier too. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Thanks for being here. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every weekday, Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Of course, we have a morning news program as well, Tech News Today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Hope you can catch us both. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.